Yeah, my name is Nicholas, and I'm going to talk about device probe uh, regressions. Uh, so uh, the the issue is that most of the platform is comprised of hardware blocks, right? And they'll in the kernel they'll be driven by uh, drivers. So whenever you have a regression that impacts those, you're going to see some uh, impact in the platform's functionality. They are still like very commonplace. Uh, so I've been doing some work uh, in upstreaming some uh, media, the, the support for uh, some MediaTek-based uh, Chromebooks, and I've seen a lot of this kind of regressions over over the over time working on this. Um, and there's also like this issue. The issue, the problem is that these issues aren't immediately detect because. Basically, there's a lack of tests validating that all the devices in the platform are actually probing. Uh, so uh, this is really like the first step in verifying the uh, the whole platform functionality is verifying that the devices in the platform are actually working before you even start running the uh, functional tests. Uh, so. Uh, to try and address this, so maybe the, the naive approach would maybe to just start by uh, reporting all the unprobed devices in a platform, but of course that doesn't work because uh, not all devices need drivers. You might have like some uh, virtual devices registered by the platform. Uh, then you have, uh, there's this function in the kernel called uh, call driver probe, which is run to call the driver probe function for each device. Uh, it does log errors returned from probe, but there are a couple uh, shortcomings there because, well, for one, uh, there are, it, it handles uh, some error codes specifically differently. So if, if the driver's probe returns inodev or enxio, uh, that's considered like a, a probe rejection. So the driver doesn't actually handle that device. Uh, but I've seen some cases of those error codes being returned like on an error path of the, the driver probe. So it, it gets like difficult to try and discern exactly whether the probe is failing or not is just rejection rejecting the match uh, for the other errors it's logged as uh warnings so not even an error um so like maybe what i'm trying to get at here is that maybe it's still kind of unclear uh in the like in the core kernel uh whether uh uh an error from a driver probe is actually an issue or not so uh but there's an underlying issue here which is that uh just relying on um, error messages logged from this function doesn't help in case the device uh wasn't even instantiated in the first place or if the driver is missing for that device because then the driver probe will never even be called so uh you don't get anything from that um uh, so uh i wanted to just uh talk a bit about what I've uh, worked so far on, uh, on on this, and also Laura, who, who is uh, here attending remotely. Um, and then I can open the floor for discussions like and to get feedback. So to try and address these issues, um, we, we, do, we did also have um, a separate test called Boot RR, um, which we were running at our labs to try and detect this kind of device probes. Uh, but one issue with that is that they were relying on some stable, uh, unstable uh, APIs. So here, what uh, what we've done is, uh, so we got a recently a case of test merged upstream to do to uh, verify the uh, probe of devices based on device tree. So the the idea is that uh, for device tree based platforms, you already have this static list of devices on the platform. And you can just rely on that, um, and also uh, to do and do some parsing of the uh, the kernel source to verify um, to to extract all the compatibles from the drivers match, so that you can so that you don't get false regress uh, false positives, right? You can just check for devices on the platform that should actually probe, 
and and check whether they are probing or not. Um, so if Laura is is here, she can talk a bit about the ACPI test as well. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. great. Yeah, just a couple of words on the ACPI catches. So we tried to follow the same approach that Nicholas just described for the ACPI platforms. Uh, so in the ACPI platforms, of course, you have the a nice description of the hardware uh, already available and mapped in CCFS as well. Uh, so that should make things a little bit easier if you're trying to understand which devices are probed correctly or not. Um, from what I can see from my first tests, uh, this should work well for all those um, ACPI enumerated devices. So the ones that have a harder ID or compatible ID uh, property in the ACPI table. Uh, but it might be trickier for all the devices that are on standard enumerable buses, so like PCI and USB buses, for example. Um, so there's a there's an RFC upstream. Um, if any of you have uh, any, uh, if any of you is interested in giving us some feedback on that, it would be much appreciated. Uh, we're just trying to uh, apply the same approach uh, for device tree and uh, ECPI based platforms. And yeah, as I said, the tricky part is uh, like just trying to get a description of what's on discoverable buses. Um, so I'll. I'll I'll get. I'll give the word back to Nicholas for a uh, description of the work that we've done so far on this. Right. So, so uh, we have these two tests, right? The the one for device tree and also the one for ACPI, which Laura just talked about. Uh, but the, there is a limitation there that we're basically just with, with those two tests, we can only test the uh, devices that are statically defined. So for uh, devices on uh, discoverable buses, like USB or PCI, uh, we really need a different approach. Um, so right now I have a, an RFC series uh, on the mailing list that uh, proposing a way to test the devices under these discoverable buses. Um, the, like the big difference here is that you start needing to actually have a, a, a static uh, definition of the devices on the platform uh, because you don't you're not getting that uh, for free from device tree or ACPI, right? Uh, so that's uh, one requirement for that test to have uh, like a per platform file describing uh, the devices that are under those discoverable buses so that they can be checked for uh, whether the they did probe or not. Uh, and the aim here is, of course, to describe this in a, a hardware topology, uh, like in a stable way, because if you're going to have to maintain this uh, static definitions per platform, you really need to make them uh, only rely on stable, uh, like on the hardware topology, which is something stable across reboots. Um, so yeah, that's the idea for what we have for this test uh, right now on the mailing list. And with that, I would like to open up for questions or feedback. So I'll ask a question. Yeah. Um, so you are looking some of the, I mean, you can't really, some of the hot plug type devices. Um, USB and such, uh, you can't really have, are you proposing that have a definition for all of those, even for the ones discoverable devices? Yeah, so uh, what we would have is, uh, for example, so I, I, I sent as part of the series, I have like a, an example a definition for a Chromebook that I have, and you would have something like a, a file uh, listing uh, uh, like for example, in this device, it has like a camera connected through USB. So we, you would list uh, like a test definition uh, for like which host, uh, USB host controller is used for that device, like in uh, the to map the hardware topology so that you can uh, verify that in the test. Like you, you would check one for one 
uh, the devices and verify that they're the right device is there and it has probed so that it works. Still doesn't solve the problem of uh, somebody just inserting a device, right? So, so is it a limited scope that right. you're at, trying to address? Right, sorry. So how would you address that? Right, right. So the aim here, it would really be like to internal devices. So not something like, not... Uh, Externally. It, yeah, like it would be catering to this uh, use case of like, we just have this platform and we want you first things like uh, verify that all the devices here probe um, so that we can later verify that they're working correctly with all the uh, specific use cases. But uh, so yeah, for the most part, we can just rely on the device tree or the AC or ACPI. But for the devices that are connected internally through a USB or a PCI bus, then we would rely on these test definitions to check for those devices as well. I think for like a, one of these cases that we have is like it's a lab where we have a bunch of uh, devices in there. And uh, one option is also that uh, those files specifying what we have connected, it's something we can maintain at the lab level. So if, for example, we connect like some USB device to a, to a Chromebook, uh, I can have that like as something that the, the lab the lab is managing, and uh, and then we can do our, our own test with that. But uh, maybe for something that end up like in the kernel tree, it's more generic. It doesn't include any of the external devices. But uh, maybe the approach, maybe what we're trying to propose here is like, uh, can we create something that's like a uh, good enough for having inside the kernel tree, but people can adapt to run their own like testing, like their own peripherals testing, for example. Um, sorry, I missed the earlier part of the slides because I think we started too early. Uh, but looking at the slides, you said something about not all devices need drivers. Right. And that kind of contradicts with, at least with the, my limited understanding of what you're trying to achieve here. So for those kind of driver devices, what are you looking for? You just want the list of devices or? So the, the only thing that I meant there is that like, if you just, if you simply look at the the whole like CSFS tree in the kernel, like you just look at all the devices and you try and uh, uh, check whether all of them are bound to a driver or not, like that won't work because okay. yeah, yeah. you have like uh, virtual devices and such. But what we really care about is the actual like devices that represent actual hardware. That's yeah. what we were trying to test here. Like, So I run into a similar problem for my own internal testing. Uh, we run, uh, latest kernel on Pixel 6. And the, the best option I've found out so far is I'll boot a stable build, what I consider a stable build, and do a find on SysFS to find all the driver folders. I'll just give me a list of devices that actually have a driver assigned to it. And then when I make some changes and reboot, I check if those files match. If, right. If the output of those command matches. Is it kind of what you're alluding to, but instead of like running it on a stable build, you just want to check it in? Right, that that's also a way to to do it. Um, um, yeah, what we're trying to achieve here is to not like. Um, so basically, what you're saying that you, you're you first you first boot into like a non good um, kernel yeah. and then use that as a reference for other boots, right? Right. Um, there there are like some advantages uh, with doing it the way we're doing like for the device tree part for example um if you if you at, at a later point like update the device tree maybe the support wasn't done completely uh from the start and then you get a like a new node in the device tree that wasn't upstreamed yet uh before but it, it is now uh testing the way we're testing like uh just looking at the current device tree and checking from that we get a new test for free, like, and uh, in that case where you're doing, like you're using a, a, a stable kernel as a reference, you have to like essentially do another, you, you have to regenerate your reference, right? Uh, okay. so, so in this case, you're uh, asking to check in the list of devices into the kernel tree. Is that what you're proposing here? Sorry, I didn't get Is, is, your, is your proposal to check in like a file with a list of devices into the kernel tree? For a particular board is that what you're asking for or uh so basically 
for for the device tree test, we don't need anything new. We uh, like, and we already have that merged, uh, right? We just rely on the device tree uh, file and the the device tree and the CSFS structure to check for the devices that are approved or not. What uh, the the thing that I'm that I'm currently proposing is to have a list of devices only for the discoverable buses, which would be USB or PCI, because just because those cannot be handled by the device tree, right? So or, even for device trees, actually, uh, there are some drivers which will just look up a node, not necessarily even having a compatible string, and then they'll kind of initialize it. Right. So, like, so how do you plan on handling those? Uh, so for those devices, uh, so the test, it only, it first parses the kernel source looking for compatibles that are inside a match structure in a driver. So those, uh, if you have a driver that doesn't use the driver core, it only like manually uh, looks for a compatible in the device tree, essentially that, that won't be tested in the current test. Like it would just be ignored. Uh, the good thing is that it also won't cause any false positives. It just won't be yeah. tested for uh, with the current test. So I work in uh, the x86 space on servers. So I'm interested in the discoverable part. Um, do you already have an idea of how you would plan to describe the system? And um, how can we vary it? Like, for example, I might have a platform that it is not a fixed platform, right? A server platform, let's say we have a 2P platform. I can either boot 1P or 2P. I can take the PCI Express, you know, links and divide them up. So, you know, I might have a BIOS option that says boot with like one or two slots at full speed or boot with four slots at half speed, et cetera. And that's configurable based on user, you know, preference. So is this something that, you know, you're, you're asking, like, can we take those into account and describe and, um, you know, make some sort of like schema or something that, you know, we can easily apply. So in the lab, we can, you know, test all the configs very minimally. Do you, do you have some? Yeah, for sure. That's something that I really like to get more uh, input on because, uh, so, as uh, in my RFC, I only handle uh, device tree based platforms, like which is like the simplest case where you just have uh, like the controller for USB or PCI. You have it just memory mapped I/O, and so like it's easier to uh, to describe the topology of the hardware in that way. Uh, so for x86, I I've only recently uh, started looking into how we could uh, achieve the same for that, but I'm, I'm still uh, I'm not, I haven't figured out the details on that yet. So that's why uh, like input from people like you, like which work on that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, could you give an example of just your ideas in your head? Like, is it is it like a some sort of like file that we can describe and we can extend that? Or is are you still looking for even that level of feedback? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So yeah, like I'm I'm thinking of a file that we could uh, basically keep as part of the test um, folder for each platform, um, and and the fit uh, as as for the feedback maybe like uh, help with coming up with ideas on how to uh, describe the hardware uh, topology for mainly for x86 platforms, which is what I I haven't uh, had much much exposure to. Um, how, how we could come up with a way to describe the hardware topology in a stable way for uh, for those platforms? Questions, yes. <clears throat> really? Well, first, uh, I strongly support the the idea of doing something that uh, encodes the information about the buses or or the uh, the devices, because right now uh, this stuff is encoded in shell scripts, right? Uh, which is very ad hoc, or even worse, it's uh, encoded in like GitLab test node scripts or something. Um, so 
but I guess my my question is, um, what was my question? Now I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I'll give the I'll give it to someone else as a question, and it'll come back to me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Well, back to like, how do we get started describing the topology? I mean, there's some libraries and tools that you can list out the hardware topology, right? And dump it to like an XML file. Is there a paradox here? Like that's depending on us discovering them. And so we can't use that or can we use that to help feedback into the testing? Sadly, we run out of time. <laughs> gonna spoil um, so yeah, thank you very much thank you no you're not out of time yeah because the next session starts at 12.45 yeah you started this too early you guys you guys it's not a lot yeah keep going well, yeah let's okay. not start this <laughs> while we check what's going on <laughs> um Tangential point. Uh, there's uh, some other talk at LPC where they're like, oh, we need to describe the dependency between device and a PCI bus with some other resource and DT. So they're trying to figure out how do we kind of even have the kernel know that these things are there and they depend on each other. So, for example, like a PCI device needs a USB or a clock that's defined in DT. So, maybe whatever solution they come up with might solve your problem. So, you might want to kind of take a look at that. Oh, that's interesting to know. Thank you. That, that that sounds like something that at least is possible today with USB. I know that in USB, there are ways to put in the device tree that says, hey, match this when a given USB device probes, and then it will actually add extra DT information from it. So presumably something a similar technique. I think SDIO can also do that. So OK, yeah, I mean, I, I can point them at you if you need. But uh, okay, sure, OK, sure. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you, yeah. Uh, All right, so in the PCI space, I might uh, just recommend, first of all, this is cool. I like this. This is a great thing to have. I might also Thanks. recommend that you make an effort to figure out if you can track like firmware versions on some of the PCI devices, because that is where you will have the most problems because um, everybody's updating firmware all the time or nobody's updating firmware ever, uh, one of the two. <clears throat> and um, you'll want to be able to, to know because you'll, you'll have a case where one firmware works great with the existing driver, another firmware doesn't. Uh, people tend to avoid that, but you just never know what you see in the real world. So I want to add that to Unfortunately, add that to your test matrix. <laughs> so to the firmware points, um, when you say firmware, are you implying like in the device itself? Correct. Yeah, so at least in the XA6 space, you have your BIOS reconfigure the PCI topology and all that. So you not don't just want to track the firmware of each individual device, but the firmware that's like global in the system. You might get a BIOS update that suddenly you can't, it doesn't describe, you know, the topology or it has uh, conflicts in resources and resources of memory. So that would be helpful too. Yeah. That's good to know. Thank you. This is not my question because I still can't <laughs> remember it. But um, I guess just JSON, uh, I mean, you didn't describe what your text format was, but I think your other question was <clears throat> like what types of things need to be described at a high level like if you just want to verify that like a web camera is present, just run the K self test or whatever the test is that, that it's there. But I guess I, I'm trying to figure out what's, what's different but about the probe. Is the probe just to verify that it's there? Or I mean, at what level are you trying to test, right? So at the, at the level of is the device present, you can run any kind of test to, as long as it's at the right place on the right bus, right? But uh, what do you mean by that? Like, uh, w um, so well, the, the idea is to verify that device is there and it has been su successfully bound to a driver because, well, things might happen at any, any of those levels, right? Uh, for, for like one interesting case is like there, there was a, at some point a change uh, in a K config 
and all of a sudden the the uh, the dev config for ARM64 no longer enabled a driver that was required for some rock chip platform, and then uh, it basically broke uh, the platform. So this this way of testing, we we're like we're using the device tree to, and we'll have like a node for that dev device, and we can check whether the device has been instantiated from device tree but also that it has been bound to a driver which might not be true if like the k config is missing altogether in this example okay so you're actually testing <clears throat> elements of the device instantiation not just whether it's present or not yeah like so basically the whole adding stack. in some like diagnostics so that your test is more fine-grained on the on the results we're really like we're, it failed because of this instead of just it's not there oh no yeah uh we're really like testing from the top so we're looking whether like the test the, the idea is that like if the test has passed then we're confident that the device like all of the driver core worked for that device like it has been instantiated uh and it has been matched to a good driver and the driver has returned probe successfully uh because like and then all the steps that he needed to to initiate the driver the device so also if i can add something like these tests are uh, we thought about this as a baseline so if you think of this test integrated in a ci maybe you don't want to necessarily have case of test built just to check functionality um so if you if once these tests are integrated in the ci and you want to have dependency you can use this kind of test as a basic baseline, like things are uh, configured correctly and there's some kind of basic functionality going on. And if this test passed, then you enable those kind of case of tests or uh, key unit tests or more advanced stuff on top. Uh, but this should be this should serve as a baseline in CIs. I'm still not clear on where you want this this kind of representation to be stored. Um, does it reside with the test itself as a metadata? It's not very clear to me yet. Right. Uh, that's uh, what I was thinking about. So in the RFC, I have uh, um, a patch adding the test. And inside the, te the test folder, we can have like a, a folder, subfolder, uh, that will be matched based on like either device tree compatible or uh, DMI for uh, x86 um, platforms. Um, and then you have like the list of devices to check for um, under discoverable buses for each platform. So <clears throat> the basic problem here, right, is that uh, different boards are going to have different devices. Um, and so you can't, if you put something upstream, right, then you have this hard-coded list. So the best you can do, I think, is provide the template for the, the people can slot devices into for their individual products or whatever. Uh, so, which is a good, which is a good thing. If there's a standard way to do that, then automated testing things can, can use that, but it still has to be customized on a per product basis, right? So you you can't you know you can't put something upstream that only that you know if like a Raspberry Pi then what are the BeagleBone people going to do um, unless you're going to have unless you you plan on having a catalog upstream of all the different boards in the world which uh, seems unreasonable. Well, yeah. So that's one thing that I would like to discuss because uh, it would be I think it would be good for everyone if we did have like that catalog upstream for all the, the boards. So like the same way we have device tree for every platform, like we might have uh, one file per each uh, per platform describing what is connected through those buses and like what we would like to test, then different CI systems can rely on that and instead of reinventing the wheel every time. So that, that would be nice to have, like for the common boards, it would be nice to say, okay, uh, is all the hardware on my BeagleBone work? Is all the hardware on my Raspberry Pi work? But in embedded development, your product's going to be, you know, you're going to have a, a board specific file and you wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't expect that to be upstream. So 
my my recommendation would be to have it's fine to put something up there as a sample uh, but make sure that it's something that uh, people recognize and can easily modify for their own boards or their own situation. And and maybe start there because you're not going to start with a po fully populated catalog. One one thing as I, I've been listening to this and I've been hearing, since you're so focused on regression testing, I actually wonder if the right answer is to write scripts that connect to a board on one version of the kernel and then can grab out all of the stuff that's there and then use that to populate your catalog. And so then for the next version, you know, you run a different version of the kernel and see if the list of hardware changed, right? And so it's sort of the database looks the same, but how the thing gets populated, anyone could run the script that could go populate it. And then if it's discoverable buses, they would also be populated and maybe even you would then have it on a per board, not even a per device. Because even, even when you have the same nominal, like you might have you know, a certain Chromebook or whatever, and it looks the same to an end user, it may have different hardware on it, right? And so it's hard to check in that one static thing. Uh, and it's, it would be interesting if you could just discover it and then catalog it. Yeah, I would say that is, yeah, I don't see us uh, ever accepting um, the files for each uh, platform. And uh, think about in the long run, it would be very difficult to maintain and keep them, um, keep them current or keep them accurate. So that's not going to happen. So I would say something like what uh, you are doing um, and then what uh, they were suggesting that having a script that would go generate it and use that, and that could potentially be associated as a, a test that would test this, could accept a metadata file to go test. It's a parameterized test that would accept a file. And then you would. To play the devil's advocate to my own point, uh, his, uh, his comment saying, hey, we already have DT files, right? So maybe at least for the upstream boards, and maybe just limited to d discoverable stuff, which is not clearly captured in ACP or DT. Is it, if it's, it's, it's possible to maintain a DT, why can't we maintain this too? Seems like a fair request. Well, you're talking to the maintainer though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Sure, so I'm asking. Well, well DT is, um, so you could derive it from, Another way to do it is you already have a DT file. What can you derive from it? I mean, so DT file is necessary to boot a kernel, boot, boot the platform. So what can you do with already existing DT file? Yeah, I think for platforms that are using device tree anyway, if you could have some form of extension overlay for device tree and make that your format, um, for device tree based things, you've already got an obvious, well, if it's upstream, there's an upstream device tree and this is relevant to all things based on that, include that there. If not, you can have it as, you know, per board overlays stored in the kernel if it make tree, if it makes sense, more likely. Um, my, my suspicion is, you know, as mentioned, the kernel tree is perhaps not the right spot for this, certainly for, you know, you, you don't necessarily want files in the kernel for every single variant of every single laptop every ever made. Um, but what you, you know, particularly since the kernel tree evolves with the kernel, and if you're looking at regression testing, you sort of want these to be static things that are independent of the kernel's history. You don't want to bisect and then be dealing with old versions of these, uh, these descriptions. Even device tree isn't always Believable. Uh, I mean, and, and, and so I'm mostly I'm saying that there's uh, recent patches I've been involved with upstream where if you go look, for instance, the ThinkPad X13 has two touchscreens listed under it. Both of them mark status okay. Only one of them will show up at runtime because that's just the way it is, right? It's second source hardware. And so we're talking about ways to make that better, but the ways that we're making it better are going to be doing more probing and it will even for things that today may be discoverable just by looking at the device tree may end up being more runtime probed. So even device tree won't give you a perfect answer.
Any, any, any other questions for Nicholas? I hope you got some good feedback to go back to work on and yeah. for sure. Thank you all so Thank much. You.